going to be able to start moving that. Going home. CLN is again. Well, no, this is the this is they want to go No, it's not the option. Yeah. 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 Supervisor Bramer. They, oh, okay. Supervisor Bramer. Yes, we're live. Okay, thank you. That's live. That was like the contracts of Salvation Army. 207, yeah. Something else. In the There's only one person. Hey, thank you, everyone, for being here. Yeah. Getting ourselves. Um, that's Back one. in order here for the ARPA, and just we have some guests in the room, so I think it will do uh, roll call this morning, or it's not this morning anymore; it's this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Supervisor Bramer here. Supervisor Dickinson. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. Supervisor <laughs> Thomas. Here. Supervisor Beatty. Here. Supervisor Wild. Uh, okay. Wayne Wilma. Here. Ray Agnew. Here. Beth Gillis. Ethan Gaddy. Here. Rachel Sieber. Here. And John Taflin. Here. Forum is established. Thank you very much. Okay, so we will take a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Supervisor Beatty. I have a second. From someone on the committee. Thank you, Mr. Agnew. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Thank you. So we're going to open it up to privilege of the floor. And I know I have at least one person here who has to go soon. So if you want to have that at Mr. Halliday, yes. Thank you. Make sure you okay. introduce yourself and nope. go to the podium. Yep. Speak into the mic so we can all hear you and the people yeah. want. Thank you for inviting us here today. Um, I'm known to have presentations with color and easels and everything else, and I'm sorry I got a late notice today, and so I have to apologize. Any information you need after we're done today, I will supply you, and I invite any one of you or all of you to come up to our station to visit what I'm talking about, okay? My name is Harold Halliday. I am known by Hal. I'm a member of the North Queens Bay Volunteer Fire Company. For those of you that might not know what that is, it's up on the east side of Lake George on Route 9 now, near Cleverdale. I've been a member of 49 years, going on 50 this year, and I brought with me our past chief, Peter Carr, who's a 40-plus year member, and he is now an assistant chief, stepping down one step. Um, between the two of us, I think we can answer any questions you might have. What I'm here today for is to ask you to help us help all of the people in Warren County. I have never been before any board or any committee in my 50 years in the fire company to ask for extra services, grants, or funds besides our Queensbury town budget. I'm really proud that our fire company has been very fiscally responsible in taking care of the equipment that we have and everything we do and keep it in budget in line. We have a great board of directors and we have a lot of businessmen running the fire company. We are looking to replace our hovercraft. It's an airboat. You might have seen it on TV a couple of times. Uh, we have an airboat from the 1990s. This airboat was originally given to us by the Warren County Sheriff's Department because of the maintenance problems they had with it. Uh, we have been able to keep it maintained and running, and most of it's been done in-house by our own guys. So that's why we've been able to afford it. But because this is a specialized piece of equipment, we have never gone to the town of Queensbury and said we need a new hovercraft because it wouldn't it would not just take care of the people in Queensbury, it would take care of people in the whole county. When I found out about the offer funds, I spoke to a, a couple of locals and said, is this something we might be able to try? And they said, yes, you got to come in with a presentation. To let you know what we do, Warren County has a Marine rescue team. For those of you who are not familiar with it, the Warren County Marine Rescue Team responds to any Marine incidents in the county. And they all respond together to the scene until they're called off by the county. We have a full rescue team in our station, fully trained. We have scuba divers. Peter can help me how many, uh, five or six at least, certified scuba divers. They all have their own gear uh, in, in their own possession. So that they have to respond to Hadley or Luzerne. They can go straight over there and help out. Where we run into trouble now is with the hovercraft, it can't keep up with us. It's breaking down. 
It came to a head uh, a few weeks ago. You probably saw it on TV where we had a gentleman ice skate across Glen Lake to test the ice for everybody, and it wasn't good, so he fell through. And unfortunately, our hovercraft broke down after leaving shore to go rescue the guy, but we were still able to get the guy out of the lake safely. Thank God he's safe. But it brought our hovercraft to a head. We've talked about the station, the elders, as I call us. Uh, we need to replace this vehicle to take care of the people in the county. And I can't stress enough that this is not just for Lake George or not just for the town of Queensbury. It's for the whole county, okay? We're looking to replace the hovercraft. We need a trailer for it, and we need new gear. Please keep in mind that the hovercraft that we currently have was never built for the fire service. It was a recreational vehicle that was purchased to provide a service that was a help to the county, sheriff's department, scuba divers, and it was a help to us, no doubt about it but it's outlived its time. It's from the 1990s, I believe, Peter, right? 1990s, and it's time to be replaced. So in order for us to do that, we would have to have about, we figured 67 pancake breakfast or spaghetti dinners, okay? But if somebody gets in trouble on thin ice someplace, I don't wanna have a pancake stop us from saving their life. And I'm gonna ask you each to please consider uh, this because this is, I can't hear it enough for the whole county. I watch every one of these meetings on TV, and if I can't watch it, you must think I'm crazy because I tape it. And when I have nothing to do at midnight, I watch these county meetings. And it's, it's better than watching some other shows, okay? I know the job you have, and I respect you for it. I would be sitting in one of those seats if my wife wouldn't divorce me. All right. All I'm going to do is please consider what we're asking for. We need $150,000 to replace the boat, the trail, and, and the equipment to bring us back to 100% service with a, a hovercraft. Now, I'm, I'm trying, I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to be, I don't, I've never done this before. I'm just telling you what we need. Okay, whatever we don't get, we have to start cooking pancakes. And we'll ask you to please come to our pancake breakfast and our spaghetti dinners. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have to tell you. Those of you that know our fire company know we are very fiscally responsible. We stay within budget. We have, a, we have great numbers. We are very fortunate that in the last three years, we have actually been able to build up our roles. I think our average age is down to 50 now, maybe, if we're lucky. It was getting up there too high, so we got a lot of younger members. They're going to scuba school, they're going to fire courses, and they're very active in the fire company. At this time, I'd like to ask between Peter and I, any questions that you have, please ask them, okay? So that we can help all the people in my county. Thank you, Mr. Halliday. I do have a question. Could you just clarify the entity that you are making the request on behalf of? Is it North, North Queensbury Volunteer Fire Company? There. Is that Fire. the same or different than the EMS? It's totally different. Okay. It's a totally separate company. That is now, I believe it's called the Queensbury Emergency Services. That's totally separate from North Queensbury Fire. Volunteer Fire Company. Yeah, it's PO Box 61, Cloverdale, New York. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else, Supervisor Beatty? Yeah, I, I just want to make a comment. Um, the North Queensbury Fire Department runs an absolute top to bottom tight ship. They don't waste a dime, a nickel, a penny. And I would wish every, every fire department ran as tight as they did and got the most out of things. Listen to what he said. They've had that hovercraft for over 30 years and they've been maintaining it. My gosh, if we could get 30 years plus out of equipment, I mean, it, it would be such an advantage. But the bottom line is they need it. I, I fully recommend, I'd like to make a motion that we supply uh, our ARPA funding, $150,000 full funding uh, for it, and uh, I, I see no reason why we shouldn't. It is for not only Queensbury, obviously, but for the entire county, and that's what we are about. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, Hi, Greg Adieu? from Glens Falls Hospital. Um, you guys do a great job. I've heard all about you from many, many folks. Um, have you filed an application yet with the ARPA? Can no, we not. Okay, I, I would ask that you do that. I think we need to have that. Gladly. Uh, and the budget, and then we could, then we could, we can act on it. Absolutely. Let me go to supervisor. Uh, excuse me. We are so <laughs> delighted to have you here, Dr. Siebert. Thank you, um, Chairwoman. I guess 
just as a point of clarification, I'd like to second that motion that was made by Supervisor Beatty with the caveat from Mr. Agnew that, in fact, a completed application would have to be submitted and on file on or before the next board meeting for consideration. The, um, before I left office, I did send a lengthy email, Mr. Halliday, on um, both to your chief, but I copied our county administrator and many other supervisors um, that would uh, have fallen within their jurisdiction as it related to, as I spoke to Supervisor Dickinson, it's such an important aspect in Lake George as well and many other Adirondack towns, um, but hoping that there was some innovative thinking, whether it be Octax or ARPA or wherever it could be from. And I know Supervisor Dickinson mentioned to me, he really appreciated that email um, and all that information that was provided in it. But unfortunately, it sounds like it might have just slipped through the cracks, but it was something that was certainly addressed almost two months ago now. I, I was hopeful perhaps our county administrator had an update on some research maybe that you did on it. But if not, I'm, I'm so happy to see how here and um, I'm hopeful that this committee today will get behind this request. It, it helps every single water body. They go out, they do training, they bring um, this piece of equipment where it's needed. Um, this isn't something that's just going to benefit Queensbury. It truly benefits the entire county and community here at home. Mr. Agnew? I, I would be absolutely comfortable with that as long as we got an application in before the board meeting. Okay. And I, I will acknowledge that there was some information sent to us. It's not a completed application, but we have the information about the piece of equipment that, or vehicle, whatever it's called, the hover hovercraft. Hovercraft. And just say, so just one more thing I forgot to tell you. The new hovercraft is a fire vehicle. It, it, the, the other one's a recreational vehicle. The power train or the air vent lifts it up and you have to steer it with your weight and a fan on the back. The new one has not only a lift, but you steer it with a second propulsion, it controls it. So you got a lot more control. If you've never seen one of these hovercrafts with an operator that doesn't know what they're doing, they're dangerous. So uh, recognizing we have a motion in a second, but is, are there any other questions for Mr. Halliday before we go to discussion? Of course, Supervisor Dickinson. Of course. Of course, you you are yes. granted privilege of the floor. Al, uh, did you make a, any attempt to get our money from Queensbury? No, we did not. I came to the county because in my world, this is not a Queensbury expense. It's a county expense. This is going to benefit anyone in Warren County. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. If someone needs that hovercraft, they call the county center and we get dispatched anywhere thank you okay no further questions for mr halliday um i'm sorry and your colleagues named peter mr carr yep. okay so mr taplin did you were you able to get any additional info about this particular item or hear no, any other I, info I, okay i'm sorry do we vote Sure, we can. I just want to make sure we get it all flushed out. The motion is to award the $150,000 request contingent upon receiving the written application with the budget materials. Yep. Supervisor Dickinson. Um, this is just a heads up. We have $734,704 to give away. We've got $3 million in this little list you have. And you've added the North Queensbury's request for 150,000. I, I, don't, I don't think we should make a decision on any of these until we talk about all of them. Chairwoman, if I may, just procedurally, we may want to follow a process where this goes in with the others rather than is perceived without an application having been filed for it, that we're awarding it, that the application that these other entities have already submitted. It may be a better procedural move for this committee to consider this request along with the other requests that were on the uh, agenda for today, for today's meeting. Okay, maybe I can just take a motion to table it to later in the meeting or what is the, proper terminology for holding the motion until later in the meeting. Yeah, you're able to. You think we're gonna go through all these today? 
I don't know that we're going to. That was not my objective. To, if people are ready to make motions, I'm, we should do that. If we want to hold, I think my intention was that we would have further meetings. We still have reporting requirements. I think maybe Gina can talk to that or Ethan. To I think based, they're the based on the fact we're willing to put in an application, I, I'd be willing to add this to this list. But I think we should go down through the list and assign the request value for each one of these. Okay. So, You've got four and a half times as many requests as you got money. Supervisor Beatty, would you agree to tabling it to later in the meeting? So we're going to table it right now and then discuss it later in the meeting? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I think we're going to come to, to uh, certain, and we'll probably discuss this, but certain items, some have higher importance than others. And I think protecting people on the ice and breaking in the ice uh, life and death situation seems to me to be a high priority. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I would hope that the committee would see it that way also and, and fully fund them. Um, not to say these other uh, things aren't, aren't deserving, but uh, we, we fully funded the EMSs. Uh, in fact, we went over and above board of funding them. And I consider this just as important as those. So uh, I would like to think that the committee, if I table it to later, that they would still uh, fully fund this uh, as we did all the EMSs that came in front of this board uh, or even submitted an application. So I will, I will allow the tabling of the amendment to table to later in the meeting as long as, as we have that discussion and it's full funding. I don't wanna get it to the point where we already gave out all the money there's none left to give them. That, it, that, that's not going to be acceptable. So I understand what you're saying. And I think that the next item on the agenda is, is to look at all of the remaining applications, which, and we'll include this with that discussion. Yes. Just as a second on that, if Doug is agreeing, and I'm not quite sure Supervisor Beatty if he is or is not, but we have some people here that have applications. I, you know, maybe a way to just do this is, of course, the Queensbury Fire or North Q is here and a couple other people, maybe the people that are here in person that want to talk about their applications, we could talk about them first and make this, you know, prioritize mm -hmm. it. Okay. So if we're tabling it, we're just, just tabling, tabling it for the people that are here to discuss those first. Would so that after be fair? privilege of the floor? We're still on privilege of the floor. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. We'll bring it up again during the meeting. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yep. Okay. So that's what we'll do. I, yes, Dennis. Uh, I, I'd like to take just a couple of minutes and have Gina flush out how much these people have asked for. I know it's in my packet, but I'm just going to go. There. I know. All right. Let's do that. Just one second. Before I ask Major Lloyd to come up, because you have a pending application, is there anyone else from the public who wants to speak on privilege of the floor? Sure. I would include you, just... Mr. McGowan. Supervisor McGowan. Yes. One of the things we're going to be asked to do on this particular request is figure out where it fits in which category under OPA, which has been a consistent theme. So I understand if I could just get a couple of questions maybe for the committee, because since we don't have the application, um, just to clarify, we understand that it's a not-for-profit, but can you address... Um, financial hardships such as declines in revenues or increased costs that your entity has experienced as a result of COVID? First, I can't give you exact numbers right now, and I want to make it really clear. The only reason I don't have an application is because I've been sitting for two months waiting for a response from the email to fill out the application, and I was called two hours before this meeting and asked to be here, and I apologize for that. I want you to do it by the book. I'll, I'll sit here the whole meeting, no problem. Oh, perfect. All right. I have no problem with that. I'll fill out the application and any numbers you need, I'll give you. But I, this was a very quick meeting, okay? And I'll ask you again, when you go through every item, I'm going to ask you to please weigh the fact, is that item good for every person in Warren County? And I thank you very much for your time and I'll answer any other questions you have, okay? Thank you. Okay. And thank well, you very much. Try to make sure we get those covered, um, Mr. Elman. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else from the public that would include Mr. McGowan? Just hold on, Dennis, one second, please. Go ahead, Brad. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I, I just want to make a, a correction there on uh, Supervisor Bay's comment. It's just this hovercraft is used more than just going through the ice. This this is a particular rescue vehicle that can go over to thin waters, marshlands, and and everything. So it 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 can actually go over land if needed. So uh, to a certain point, not rocky land, but you know you could do it. There. So it, I I want that's why it's a three sixty five vehicle. Thank you. Thank you. I want to go to Gina, but go ahead, Dennis, and then Gene. Uh, Ethan was so kind as to point me to the list. <laughs> okay. Well, we're on privilege of the floor, Supervisor Morlino. I'll give you my two cents. Um, living in uh, Lake Luzerne on the Hudson River and the Sacandaga River, these guys have been there quite a few times over my 18 years of being supervisor. And they do a hell of a job. And they found a couple of the victims. And it's tough, it's tough to drag them out of the water when they're full of water. But I, I give I applaud them and for the work that they do. This is a real good project for this group. Good. Gina, could you there's no further privilege of the floor. Do you want to point us to where we're looking at the rest of the applications, please? So on page five at the top. And the total of all the ones that are listed is three million three hundred five eight hundred thirty five. That doesn't include the one fifty just asked, which totals three million four hundred fifty five eight thirty five. Yeah. And can you say one? Okay, there it is on the page right before that at the bottom in the blue highlighting is the number uh, yeah, that we have uh, left 734,704. Okay. And uh, just to clarify the Warrensburg EMS equipment, that line is blank there. We just got a late application oh, submission. Yeah. And that was about 97K, right? 97.651. Yeah. So that puts us closer to 3.5 million in requests. And we only have 734. Okay. Correct. Not to be a wet blanket. Right. What, um, Gina, are you able to speak to the sheet that talks about the status of the awards and how much money has actually been distributed? I thought that was somewhere in here. Yeah. Um, Distributed so far, this is including March, which some of them probably haven't even gotten yet, but some of them are March 17th. If the total amount paid is on the fourth page, um, down at the bottom, it says awaiting signed contracts, then there's awarded. That's how much everybody's been awarded and how much folks have been paid. That's the 2 million one ninety eight fifteen twenty. Okay. And I've been advised that there's at least one entity that we awarded funds to, and they are going to, um, they are declining the funds. So that will come that's, back into the ARPA pot. That's actually, uh, I added it back in. I know you've, I, you've got to. I don't know the details yet. Yeah. It, but that number in the blue is the number that's has it added back. With that money in there. Okay. Okay. Is there any reason that we're still awaiting signed contracts? Uh, we did get a CWI and the other ones, but I think it's just the, the um, applicant. We're waiting on the applicants. Okay. Because I know there was a concern about getting the money out the door and making sure that we are doing that by the deadline. What, what are we doing? Mr. Agnew? Um, I know Nino at North Country, and I asked him about it. And he said, oh, I don't think I ever got a contract. I'm sure he did. Um, so Is I'll stop by on my way. I got the driver right by there on my way. Also. Okay. Ask him to find it. Yes, yeah. good. That's Mr. Taplin, do you want to speak to this? No. Okay. Are there any questions on the chart? 
and on the project still still to be decided we do have at the top there the salvation army with the two requests major if you are available and willing to speak to these i think that that would be an appropriate now would be an appropriate time to do that thank you thank you for um giving us the opportunity to come in today and, and talk about needs uh, that came up during uh, the COVID pandemic. And, uh, you know, these, these uh, social determinant of health needs, you know, moving forward. Um, there were two applications uh, that I made to the ARPA. One, I have uh, rescinded. It was for $250,000 to, um, uh, uh, to be earmarked for the development of a code blue shelter. Tuesday, I was informed by the county that um, Open Door has decided now that they're going to continue uh, for the foreseeable future with um, providing code blue uh, shelter. I will say to this group, and I've said it to another group before, Warren County has a 100% increase in homelessness. Um, in the last year, uh, Code Blue has seen a tremendous uh, rise. Um, the county doesn't have an emergency shelter right now. Open Door is um, uh, does uh, a um, a shelter program, which is a, a bit of a continuum of care, transitional shelter, but it's not an emergency shelter. Um, the emergency shelter that we're doing in the county right now is motels. Um, and so that's not a good situation. So we're placing families with kids and, um, and singles in motels. And um, oftentimes it's just, it's not a good mix. Not to mention it's, it's, not, it's not sustainable, you know, from, from a budgetary uh, perspective. So I did withdraw that 250,000. I was, you know, I'm happy to hear, I'm very happy to hear that, that um, Open Door is gonna continue the cold blue. Um, we're excited about that. I think, you know, you have to prioritize uh, in the opera committee, you know, where you want to put your money. But I want to tell you that, that and I, I brought, um, I'm glad to see um, Deputy Commissioner um, Nina here today because the county doesn't have a great plan for homelessness, especially around emergency shelter for what they call um, low barrier beds, and especially around um, families, women and children. And um, so we, you, you really need to think about that, I think, in, in its totality. But that proposal I'm withdrawing because we were going to earmark those funds for um, development of a code blue because the pressure was on if Open Door wasn't going to continue for us to get it open by October. And so the, the 250000 was going to go towards uh, uh, leasing a building and securing a building uh, pro temp. So um, if that's okay, I, I just, you know, put it out there. I don't know if you have any questions for Deputy Commissioner around uh, homelessness, but I think that the county has a huge problem. And not just for this county, there's an overflow. Um, Washington doesn't provide the same services. And so Warren County ends up taking a hit uh, when it comes to homeless service provide. You know, they, they tend to... Um, uh, to end up on on Washington doorstep, and so um, when I tell you that there's that there's a big problem coming with homelessness, um, I'm not playing. The um, the stats are just are just crazy, and and think about a hundred percent increase in one year, and what's caused that is the inflation, and then for so for so long, evictions, you know, um, were um, there was a moratorium on evictions. All of that has been lifted now. And when I tell you that we're inundated from an emergency service perspective of people that are being evicted and now you know, trying to get into housing, uh, we just have a housing uh, shortage and you're gonna have a big problem uh, on your hands. So that's all I got to say about that. I, we're, we're, we're asking you know, that that uh, proposal be taken off, but I. I don't know if you want to earmark that money just based on what I've said uh, for the homeless continuum uh, in this county, uh, because um, 
like I said, it's it's very difficult uh, to uh, to service at this point, and um, keeping people in motels uh, is is not a good solution. Thank you, Major. Before you move on to the other topic, I did reach out to Open Door because because your application was in when Open Door said they were changing gears and we're not going to do Code Blue, and we needed someone to help with the emergency shelter especially including the code blue, the low barrier shelter. And, you know, the, the executive director did confirm to me that they plan to move forward, you know, continue with hosting code blue, but he had a lot of concerns about exactly what you are saying. The need is astronomical and they're, they're already at max. I mean, essentially. So even if we don't need your particular application right now, I think that we're going to need to address it. So I would love to hear from the deputy about needs for the county and whether or not your department needs funding set aside, earmarked, held from this before we distribute all the funds out of ARPA. Or if there's another plan, if there's state funding, that'd be great. Oh, I hate the microphone. Um, yes, so homelessness is certainly, we've seen a rise since the pandemic. Um, we do rely on motels for temporary shelter. Um, just an example, last year we had 29 motel placements for Code Blue for the Department of Social Services, and this year we're at 59. So with the open door mission, meeting capacity, whether through the shelter staffing, whatever the reasons may be, um, we're just gonna continue to see the numbers rise. Um, the department, um, I would be interested in knowing what that application process would be. We were encouraged by the Salvation Army willing to work with us because we ultimately contract with agencies to provide homeless services. The county does not directly provide it except for providing the temporary shelter. So if it's something where the continuum of care with the Department of Social Services could submit an Apple, Apple, ARPA application, um, we certainly would be willing to do that. The department is concerned about the Open Door Mission's ability to maintain both Code Blue sheltering for Warren and Washington County, since um, we are seeing the increase in numbers of what that's going to look like for next year. Right now, um, Warren and Washington County use the same motel placements. We average about 20 to 25 homeless placements in the motels. Um, we're hoping that Washington County's numbers are almost double that right now. So um, are there any particular questions that I can help answer in terms of departments? Per I mean, it's certainly a need. Our continuum of care meets monthly to talk about it, um, but we rely on agencies such as the Salvation Army and um, the Open Door Mission to provide the continuum of care and homelessness services. Certainly, the motels provide shelter, but DSS doesn't necessarily always have that wraparound support to be able to get people into services and supports that they need to, to get into permanent housing as successfully as a program such as Open Door Mission or Salvation Army. Is this something that's being discussed in the Human Services Committee? The homelessness need for next year? I mean, now, obviously, but for next year as well. Well, we've been having conversations. I mean, last August in July, when um, Open Door said they weren't going to be able to provide Code Blue anymore, we hit the ground running. And that's when the Salvation Army said, we can do this. They're well-versed in providing sheltering services, and we were happy to partner with them to be able to do that. And we just were notified on Tuesday that the Open Door changed their plan and now they're going to continue to provide the service so now we're backtracking a little bit to figure out where we need to go but it has been an ongoing conversation i know that you're having conversations with open door and salvation army and the coc i'm asking specifically about the warren county human services committee because i because i feel that strongly that the committee the elected officials should know what's happening i just got a call yesterday about a woman in a hotel in warren county and i had to scramble and figure out how to help her from getting evicted by the warren county sheriff 
And it turns out she wasn't even a Warren County resident. Right. Th these are concerns that are going to continue happening. It's not going away. I mean, we, we as elected officials need to know what is happening. I mean, I know the city of Glens Falls officials don't know exactly what's happening either. Or maybe they do, but this is our responsibility, right? It's the county's responsibility to house people. Right. I want to go to Supervisor Beatty and then I'll come to you. Okay, thank you. Um, it's a county's responsibility. But I think we're getting all the other county needy coming to Warren County because we give the best services. We have, uh, I know, for example, I was talking to a resident just a month ago and she was talking to an individual lady uh, who needed, had needs, two kids. She was moving from Saratoga County to Warren County. Why? Because she says, well, I get a lot more services in Warren County. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. I'm just saying uh, um, I'd like to work with Washington County and Saratoga County so that we're all consistent on what we're doing for the, for the needy. And when one county doesn't do enough or another does way too much, I, I think there's an imbalance here, and that's an injustice to all the, all the individuals. So I mentioned this to uh, our county administrator, Mr. Taplin, a while ago, and uh, you said you'd look into other counties and their services, what they offer and so forth. So um, when you get a chance, hopefully you can share that. I, I just think we need consistency on what we can offer all counties, what they can offer residents. And, I, and having ups and downs and all that doesn't help anybody. That's all I'm saying. Well, if I could just, just to clarify a little bit, Warren, Washington, and Saratoga County are all part of a continuum of care. So we do all work together. And there's something that each Department of Social Services, we have a district of fiscal responsibility. So if someone, yes, we may need to meet the emergency need of someone being homeless and presenting homeless in our county at that point in time, but we do work with the other counties if they're fiscally responsible for that person. So there is a shared combined effort um, and Washington County is certainly on board to make sure that we're all working together. Ultimately, it comes down to what buildings are available, how do we meet the need and bring everyone to the table to address it. So it's we're not always taking on an additional, are there times when yes, we may be fiscally paying more, certainly, but. It, it wasn't so much the fiscal part of it. Um, I just think that when individuals move from one county to another because of, of what they perceive, maybe they don't perceive it correctly, but what they perceive as, you know, more services or something, mm -hmm. I just like to have it balance across the three counties. Right. And I'm not sure we have that, although. I hear Warren, yeah, Warren County will help out and that's good and we talk, but I'm not sure if that individual didn't move from Saratoga to Warren County for nothing. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm specifically moving to Warren County with my two kids because there's more services offered. So I don't know. I just like to get balanced, that's all. Right. I want to take care of them all. And, and, and if Saratoga, if we need to help them out and do something for them to get them up to speed, great. Right. You know, that's all I'm saying, yes. <laughs> just a, just a minute. I want to go to Supervisor Bruno, even though he's not on the committee. I'd give him privilege of the floor without objection. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to tell you, as a member of the Human Services Committee, we have not discussed this issue in detail or to any great lengths. I'm sure we would be happy to if someone were to bring it up and, you know, furnish some information to be put on an agenda, but we have not discussed it in, as I say, in detail. I just wanted you to be aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Taplin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, I, I was just gonna say that I think this is a discussion for the Human Services Committee, uh, not necessarily the ARPA Committee. I think the issue at hand is that the Salvation Army is withdrawing their request for the $250,000 to run the equivalent of a code blue, uh, and we do have it in writing that Open Door has agreed to do that. If there are other issues in addition to that, um, I, DSS could come back with a request for ARPA funding, but that would be a separate request, not really tied to this, I don't believe. I get that. I completely agree. My concern is that 
uh, if we don't have any money left, they can't come back to ARPA for money to help with <clears throat> wraparound services or, a, you know, a mini code blue shelter or something like that. I, that is a concern I just want the committee to be aware of. Um, with that, if there's no other questions for Deputy Mastriani, we'll let her. Yes, Ethan. <laughs> I do have one question, just to sort of bring this back to the, the function of this committee. Um, I don't know if you can answer this as a, you know, from a department perspective or just anecdotally from your personal perspective of how much would you attribute the pandemic into the, um, the increase in homelessness? I'd have to go back to really give you a good figure, but what I can say is that we have a lot of individuals in our community that they've been able to maintain housing because of a lot of the COVID waivers that have been put in place for evictions and so on and so forth. But they live paycheck to paycheck and housing in our county is, is very expensive. And we've seen an increase in HEAP, SNAP and temporary assistance applications. So once people start getting behind in rent, we're gonna see an increase in homelessness. So, and it is related to the pandemic in terms of losing their jobs, inflation being impacted by the pandemic, whether they're able to go back to work or not. So um, we're starting to see the increase in our cases now. And um, if you'd like a, an exact figure, I'd be happy to put that in, the ARPA application, um, we would just have to figure out how to move forward with that. Could I have a motion to refer this to Human Services Committee to discuss exactly that, whether you know the committee wants to have DSS put in an application and for what amount and for what project? Yes, Rachel. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, I'd be happy to make that motion with a caveat that we did make this referral back in 20, we'll just last November and December over to Supervisor Driscoll who chaired that committee and asked that this be discussed at length because we were concerned about the need. Um, I remember us talking about it here, but also at Human Services last year, just bringing it up from Commissioner Hanchett from the perspective of, you know, how involved do we need to be? He had said that um, the county, he was authorized to sign the contract. I remember some discussion about the contract. And then that led us to even, even more um, in-depth discussion just about one human services. So I don't think it's been discussed in 2023 as Supervisor Bruno mentioned, but it does sound like it's a direct need. It's something that the county is responsible for. And I am sure that there are many state, local, federal grant dollars that can also help in partnership with surrounding counties to address the homelessness need and, and should definitely be a top priority of Supervisor Driscoll. Uh, so I'm happy to make that motion with those notes, Mr. County Administrator, if you wouldn't mind including those over once again. Sure. Thanks. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Thomas. Discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Thank you. If we can have assistance getting that prioritized, that would be great. Okay. Thank you, Nina. Is it okay? Yes, thank you. I will, I will just add a footnote to your uh, last discussion. At the last uh, COC meeting, uh, the st stats were 100% um, increase year to year, 100% increase. Uh, that's with all of the agencies that provide services around the table uh, coming together. So um, uh, it's, it's important. Uh, I've come uh, the, to ask the uh, ARPA committee today, our second application is around our emergency food services uh, for the county and our need to expand uh, refrigeration, especially uh, rapid refrigeration and large uh, storage of uh, cooler and, um, and freezer space. During uh, COVID, um, I think, and I, I know that at least some of the supervisors in this room, I know Dr. Sibu was at one of the big um, uh, drive through food pantries. Um, the need for food in this county and fresh food was overwhelming. 
the small Salvation Army of Glens Falls uh, distributed the equivalent to 364,000 meals in 13 months. Part of the trickiness of doing that is where are you going to store? I mean, we were getting tractor trailer trucks full of frozen and refrigerated products. And because there were some businesses that were not open during the pandemic, we were able to get additional refrigeration space that was needed. Six Flags was a huge help to us. And that's why we, we did some of the drive through there because they allowed us to use their large refrigeration space. Um, uh, we did uh, some work with um, you know other uh, entities around town and we were begging and borrowing companies for refrigeration space and freezer space all over town. Um, at one point, even um, the Civic Center unloaded the bears so that we could put turkeys uh, in the uh, in the coolers over at the, the Civic Center. The Salvation Army works in collaboration, as you would understand, with many, many nonprofits. We're often, you know, um, head a collaboration. One of our collaborations is with Comfort Food Communities, and they're based out of uh, out of um, uh, uh, Washington County. And what we've been able to do through the pandemic until now is um, deliver food items, pantry items and fresh food items to vulnerable populations so that they could stay in place. That was the initial thing, you know, so all of the senior high rises in town, uh, we were delivering once a week along with um, with comfort food community. And then all of the area motels where people were kind of stuck in this, not being able to move out of the hotels we were, we were delivering. We're still delivering uh, to the local hotels. We're still delivering to the senior high rises, even uh, as of uh, today. One of the one of the things that we've noticed just in this last year, as of this past October, so the our fiscal year ended at the end of September, is we had 2,200 new families um, need to access the Salvation Army's food pantry. In an average year, we'll service about 5,000 families. We had 22 new families in addition uh, to that in one year. Inflation, food cost is is driving the need up. So we've seen the need for um, for food service increase. At the same time, uh, and um, Ray, you would know this, um, the folks from uh, lower economic uh, situations tend to suffer more with preventable uh, diseases, you know, that are, are nutritionally kind of caused diseases. And so while we're giving them a lot of food or trying to at least keep food in the cabinet, you know, oftentimes uh, it's shelf stable food, which is highly processed. So we see a disproportionate amount of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, the stat for um, Warren County uh, um, youth compared, you know, for lower income uh, youth compared to normal is uh, approaching 90% obesity in lower income uh, youth. And it's because of, you know, they eat a lot out of shelf stable foods, you know, out of um, the food pantries. And so to expand this capacity for refrigeration so that we can get more fresh food, not just fresh food, you're aware the Salvation Army was recently awarded a contract for Meals on Wheels. Senior Nutrition is big with us. And, you know, to be able to be to to give high quality, nutritious food, a meal, you know, to somebody with fresh ingredients uh, is is important. So uh, the need uh, is was definitely um, brought on by the pandemic. It was something that we were barely able to keep up with. Um, just the food cost alone, uh, we're spending right now on average $5,000 a week at the food bank uh, just to try uh, to meet the need. Mm -hmm. To give you an idea of that budget, you know, prior to um, the pandemic, it was about 30% of that on a weekly basis. So it's, 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 it's here. It's not going away. It's a huge need. And so in collaboration with Comfort Food Community, we talked about like, how do we improve supply chains across the counties, right? Does it make sense for um, a Comfort Food van to drive from Greenwich 
to Stitchman Towers, you know, or to Cedars? Or would it make sense if we had some, you know, some significant cold storage in, in a strategic location here in um, Warren County that we could bring a truckload over here? You know, I could truck it from the food bank uh, ourselves, or we could truck it from Greenwich ourselves and have it um, supplied uh, locally. And that way, again, we're not driving two trucks to the same location for two different, um, you know, drop-offs, shelf-stable versus fresh. And our biggest concern is getting fresh food uh, to the folks, you know, because the social determinants of health is is a big factor that um, that costs the county a lot of money behind the scenes, you know, with um, you know preventable diseases, preventable, you know, you know, just the nutritional based um, uh, problems, and so with an expansion of um, of refrigeration capacity strategically placed, uh, we'd also be able to collaborate with some of the medical uh, service providers up here in food for medicine um, uh, programs, which um, folks are prescribed, you know, um, special diets, you know, based on, and we're able to help make sure that they get those ingredients, you know, to meet those dietary um, prescriptions. So, um, we asked for $100,000, about $45,000 of that in our budget is for um, what they call rapid chill um, coolers. This can take hot food to frozen quick. And, um, and that helps because when you put warm food in a traditional freezer, uh, it, it tends to take longer to freeze, it brings the temperature of the other stuff down in that freezer. It's just not designed to do that. It's not, it's not ideal. And, um, and by increasing the capacity to do that, um, just on a side note, we met with, um, we met with the uh, staff at Cedars who does the uh, Meals on Wheels program. Now we, we met with the staff and we talked with the staff about what could we do better moving forward, you know, and um, would you folks like to come on with the Salvation Army to a person? They all said that they would like to come on. And, um, and so we, we had a big strategic meeting with those specific employees who are doing the, the providing of what is needed right now. Blast Chiller was at the top of the list. The other question that I asked them is, what is the percentage of efficiency that you have in the kitchen right now? You know, are you are you maxed at 100 percent, you know, and or could we do more without bringing on more personnel? And they told me that they felt that they were right at about 50 percent efficiencies and that if we had if we had uh, increased cold storage capacity, that we could increase the meal output by 100 percent without having to add on staff. And they were very excited about the idea of being able to bring on fresh food. Why I mention that to you is because strategically we're hoping to open at least two new um reopened cedars but at least two new congregate meal sites for seniors where they would have uh hot meals in a congregate setting five days a week and be able to have this ability to produce high quantity of of um medically um designed meals that we could provide to um, senior citizen folks in low income as food or medicine. So in order to do that, we need the blast chiller. The other thing that we need is we need to increase our, our capacity of traditional walk-ins. And, um, and so we need two large uh, traditional walk-ins. They're about $24,000 each is the quote. Uh, so you see 50 on one side, 45 on the other. Um, you know, uh, installed, uh, we're right at about a hundred thousand, uh, we're right at about a hundred thousand uh, dollars for those two pieces of equipment. This will increase our capacity from what it is currently right now, uh, by over 300%. And which is exciting for us because again, the need is so overwhelming right now, like homelessness, you know, we're being inundated with requests, you know, for, for food. And, uh, you know, you can store a can of beans anywhere, but, you know, with the gleaning programs that we have with local farmers, 
uh, that takes large walk-ins. That that fresh food isn't processed, you know, quickly. And we need to be able to store that food, process that food, quick freeze that food if we're doing meals, and 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 again store that uh, that product. So that's um, that's my request to Opera. It's hundred thousand dollars. It's for increasing um, refrigeration space uh, for Warren County, and it's based on what happened during the pandemic. And, and what the need is now as a result of the pandemic. Thank you. And I thank you for being here. Sorry, I got distracted there for a minute. It's, it's good to have you here in person. I know that there's gonna be some questions. Rachel. Yes, go ahead. thank you, Chairwoman. Um, I, I'm so glad I got to volunteer and see some of the problems firsthand. My um, question though, it perked my ear when you were talking a little bit about the contract with the county. I just want to be clear, you currently are able to meet the needs of the contract that you applied for and was awarded without any ARPA dollars. Yes. This, yes. So this award would, if you decide it to go to the, the full 300% or, or increase the capacity by 50% with CEDARS, this would help with that. But that's not the sole reason why you're asking for it. No, the, no, it's the sole reason. The sole reason is a result of ARPA. If, 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 if this... If this will help us. You can do yeah. what you've already committed yeah. to. Okay. That's all I wanted. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with questions for the major? Sorry. I'm sorry, Brad. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, it's been privilege of the floor to Mr. McGowan, even though he's not on the committee without objection. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks. The size. What, what are we talking square footage of uh, freezer space? I'm sorry to talk. So the blast chiller is, um, if you've ever been in the restaurant industry at all, you've seen the rollers that roll the full-size baking pans. Have you ever seen those rollers where you can put uh, 20 baking sheets on it and they roll in and out of the kitchen? So the blast chiller is, the, it fits that size. The door opens up and you roll in a whole rack at a time of, of processed food and you close the door. So it handles 20 racks. Um, the size of it is is the size of a single door large re commercial refrigeration unit. You know, so think about you know seven or eight foot tall by about three and a half four foot wide. That's right, which does one rack at a one, one rack at a time. Twenty trays. Say. Yeah. Okay. And 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 that will do rapid cooling and rapid uh, freezing. The other units uh, that we're looking at are two large walk-ins. And again, the, the size determination will, will be based on you know, location specs. Again, we want to position these um, strategically. Uh, our, our first thought right now is to position them at Cedars. We've had some conversation uh, with Cedars about you know, the space that they have there, the fact that they have 125 senior citizens in-house over there. And they showed us that they have a lot of small bend over chest uh, coolers. Uh, that, that location seems, seems nice to us. I think that we can do uh, 14 foot deep um, uh, coolers, 12 foot wide, seven foot high. Uh, and we're looking at two of those, one as a cooler and one as a, and one as a, a freezer uh, space. And again, the, the quotes I've gotten right now is about $24,000 on those. Thank Great. You. Okay. Open it up for discussion by the committee members. Does anyone want to make a motion on this? Pardon, in advance of a motion, yes. uh, start going through and funding, was the intent of this meeting to, as Supervisor Dickinson mentioned, to sort of go through the remaining requests, see where they stand, and then um, figure out allocation from there? Or was it to go through these one by one and decide the funding? Okay, that's a good point. We can do that. Let's, let's go through them holistically before we start making motions one by one. Does that sound reasonable? I mean, if we have the whole package in front of us, I mean, may as, I mean, if we're going to fund one thing, we're going to have to fund less of another. So you may as well understand what we're not going to fund. Yeah. Well, when I did, I added, I tried to add up, um, take out the first one, the 250. Okay, say we were going to just hypothetically um, fund the Salvation Army for the 100,000. 
DPW 235. I'm skipping the SUNY ones. Bay Ridge, Fire Spreader. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Warren Center. We haven't discussed that really. Warrensburg EMS asked for more money. I'm going to skip the fire tanker. Um, and then we've got the North Queensbury from today at 150. North Queensbury fire. That's so, so somewhere okay. around, what is it? What's it come to? Just give me a second. Oops. So three, three, five. That's about six hundred thousand. No, not. SUNY is a hundred um, million. If we don't include SUNY, yeah. um, and if we don't include the fire tanker right at this minute, okay. So that right. if we if we made a holistic motion to fund those. Mm -hmm. I guess we need to know what number. So I, I will do, I would do that. A motion for one, two, three, four, five right now, which is Salvation Army at 100,000, Warren County DPW at 235,000, Bay Ridge Fire Spreader at 28,000, Joseph Warren Center at 80,000. <laughs> And North Queensbury at 150,000. And do the other note on this would be um, if Salvation Army and Code Blue, you know, they're working out whatever details they have to work out with, um, you know, emergency shelter. But I think we have heard that there is a, a need to address the increase in homeless population that has been a direct result from the pandemic. Um, you know, depending on how we want to handle it, we could either earmark funds out of the ARPA pot for that purpose. Uh, I know one of our primary, um, our, one of our priorities was more vulnerable population. It has been mentioned that there might be other funding opportunities to address this increase in homeless population, but it does sound like a pressing need to me. Um, I don't know if it's the will of this committee to earmark something to decide on the exact use of it at a later date. Um, but I think it bears some consideration to have funding set aside to address the needs of the homeless population. The, when those five that I just listed off add up to 593,000, so that leaves us with some chunk of money to set aside for homelessness, Mr. Dickinson. Um, I'm not going to argue that point. Uh, you skipped over a Warrensburg EMS equipment. Yeah, I know. I don't know what number to put in there. Uh, 97.6 was the ask. So but that one and the Joseph Warren Center, I think we should probably discuss. They're pretty big requests, and we haven't talked about them before. Well, I, that's the other point I had. Uh, you crossed off to, to SUNY Adirondack. I'm not quite sure why. Well, I, I skipped them. I'm not crossing them off. Well, if you ran out of money, you crossed them off. And the other one, the other one is a big fire spreader. I thought they were supposed to be putting them out. I, thought, I think you could ask them for how they stopped. I believe you get one for the dentist. The other one, I'll say that we didn't award money to the um, individual who requested septic funding. And I think that was something like $9,000. I don't think she ever got help from Queensbury. And the spreader is like a jaws of life kind of thing, right. as I understand it from reading that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> nice Joseph, okay. Joseph Warren Center, is that the historic project? Yeah. That's, a, that's the additional money needed for the contract to come up with a design for the Joseph Warren Center. Additional money, where did they get money from to start with? They started with $62,000 from um, DPW funding. So DPW had about half, roughly half of the contract funded. Supervisor Beatty. Thank you. Yeah, um, the historic fund, would that be more of a county 
responsibility. And I don't see how that's COVID ARPA related in any way. Um, am I missing something? My question. I mean, I I'll, think it's a, a it, really great asset to the county. I am yeah, also I'm having really, a hard time finding. I'm not sure how that bars under the ARPA format and, and guidelines. You'd be better off there, I think. I know, Frank. Yes. Yeah, because it's tourism related. Part of the ARPA funding is for uh, to expand tourism, I believe. Yeah. That's a good, good catch there, Frank. Not a catch, it's a fact. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was some language in the um, in the final rule for supporting impact industries such as tourism. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, personally, I think that's a county responsibility. I think the county should be funding it and not out of the ARPA money, but that's my opinion. So, so well, let's put, maybe we can just put a couple together so that people feel comfortable they can vote the way they want to on each one. Well, I, yes. I, I agree with you that the 100 for the meals, the uh, DPW 235, you got the infamous fire spreader. I want him to name it after me. Um, <laughs> Joseph Warren's is a, is a toss up. You got 100,000 for Warrensburg EMS. That's 700,000. Let's do it. Ethan? Oh, I just wanted to clarify with the Warrensburg EMS. Um, this this is a follow-up conversation that we had based on um, the determination that we weren't going to pay premium pay for some organizations. They would submitted an application, original round of applications, um, before we solicited input from EMS districts. Uh, I think in January, start of this year, um, Warrensburg EMS did reach out with a letter explaining that while they did not get funded for premium pay, they were interested in um, equipment costs like many of the other districts did receive throughout the county. Um, and they outlined, you know, what is they wanted. And then they, in addition to the letter, submitted an application. Um, so there is there is a for, pretty good reason for that being where it is right now, as opposed to having seen it for the initial round of um, EM applications. So that's what I okay. Sure. I'm just going to take them one by one. Yes, Rachel. I just have a question on that. So Warrensburg EMS did not get funding previously. This is a revised one, which yeah, would make sense. It's my understanding, I have to go back through all the notes that they had an initial request that dealt with uh, offsetting premium pay. No, 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 I understand all that. Yeah, I don't get it. The Warrensburg Fire got money. Okay, thank you. They're just requiring that. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's right. right. Okay. When you talk about the SUNY Adirondack SUNY Potsburg joint venture, I would appreciate if you would do that separately. And I was so um, interested in the lesson and information that was given publicly by your county attorney last month that when you have that discussion, I would like to recuse myself and walk out of the room. And if you could let me know when you're done having that discussion, I'm happy to walk back in. But when you get to that point, just for for a request, please. Sure. That is only for the one that includes SUNY Plattsburg with SUNY Adirondack as I teach for SUNY Plattsburg at Queensbury. Thank you for that full disclosure. Do you know and which I application is the one that includes the Plattsburg piece? You know, I can see multiple applications in here. I don't see theirs because it's not just SUNY Adirondack. Um, is there somewhere in here, Gina, that there's? Yeah. The summaries have in there. Right, I don't. Is there page number where you mean SUNY Adirondack and SUNY Plattsburgh in the, in the summary that. section yeah. is that in the health professions one yeah can you, can you show me on yours it's under the third orange cover third orange cover sorry I'm looking for page numbers third orange cover one two I thought the SUNY Plattsburgh ones had it. to do with the laptops and stuff that we already awarded that was the, yeah. the research. It's down under the, I believe, the Research Foundation for SUNY. Right. Which one is that, Wayne? Uh, I don't. I've got my own list from when I did the rating. Yeah. So we I, already awarded that one, though. I believe it right. is. Right. I don't believe these two have to do with Plattsburgh. You could just sit around there. You're pretty sure that was a joint one. No. Okay. Thank you. Where's thank you. Um, but okay. Well, then I'm here. No problem. If it's only SUNY Adirondack and you're all confident, that's fine. I'm in. Never mind. Thank you for the clarification. I got great. Okay. So let's start with this first. The do I have a motion 
to award the hundred thousand dollars to soon SUNY Salvation Army for the I'll move that. Thank you, Wayne Lamoth so, on the motion second by Supervisor Dickinson. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, that one carries. Secondly, Warren County DPW recycling facility at 235,000. Do I have a motion for that? Supervisor Dickinson, is there a second? Second. Mr. Lamoth, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Lamoth. I'm as bad as the guy. He's over there. <laughs> Mr. Agnew, <laughs> discussion. Explain to me how this is related to ARPA funding. Mr. Taplin. I agree with uh, Supervisor Thomas. I was going to recommend that maybe we hold this one uh, because I don't, I, while I believe this is a worthy thing for us to do, I'm not sure how it's related to ARPA funding. Mr. Elman. The county's allowed to have an offset uh, on the OPERA award without purpose. I want to say the cap was around 10 million. We're nowhere near the 10 million cap. So anything that's going to the county does not have to have a specific subcategory like we do for the awards that are going to non-county recipients. So there's no legal impediment to doing this award or the award for the other tourist thing that doesn't need to be classified as a tourist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Allen, thank you for that clarification. Do you know what the number is that we've awarded to the county? I wouldn't say it's over at least 4 million, but not more than 10. So, yeah, I got to look at planning on that, but I, I think that the number that we're allowed to, uh, as a standard deduction, was around 10 million, 10 point something. I don't want to misspeak on what the point was. Maybe okay. 10.2. What? 10, I think. That was to the county between different projects. A lot went to um, workforce development and a lot went to DPW for bridges and culverts and that sort of thing. So I think it's around six. And there was recovery of expenses that That's also right. came out uh, right up front. Uh, Bumping up to the 10. No. Right. All those in favor for the DPW recycling project, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. I'm going to do. Um, Raise your hands, please. Raise your hands if you are for it, for it. One, two, three, four. Opposed. One, two, three, four, five. That does not carry, okay? Going to the Bay Ridge Jaws of Life project at 28,358. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. Thank you, Supervisor Dickinson. Second, Mr. Lamar, discussion. I think Dennis said he wanted a name for him. Should we add this? Awesome. The chair is prerogative to override that condition on the approval. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Carries. Joseph Warren Center, $80,000. I'll move that. Supervisor Thomas, second by Supervisor Dickinson. Discussion. Yes, Rachel. You know, I just want to state that over the last couple of years, particularly in 2021, we worked closely and Frank Thomas was gracious enough to sit on that committee and work with the Joseph Warren Center. I do think that what we've read about the pandemic and the impact of it has been significant on any type of historical societies. I think that it continues to not only be something that would qualify for occupancy tax, but I understand that that's not something that's before them, but also would qualify under ARPA. I hope that the general fund continues to support them as they continue to grow and talk about the rich history we have here, but also recognizing that that was an activity and something that certainly went towards mental health when we talk about the impact of the pandemic, and, and I'm fully prepared to support it through ARPA dollars, and I hope that the full board does. Frank? Yeah, this money is to uh, complete the uh, design phase of uh, Building 11, what used to be the detention center. And, uh, and and it's a, in an effort to get it completed before the uh, or by the 250th uh, anniversary of 
a revolution. And uh, plus, it, it, it's to develop that into a uh, basically Joseph Warren's house, a museum that I believe will uh, benefit the county greatly down the road. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Thank you. Warrensburg EMS equipment for a request of 97,000. 515. 97,515. Is that a motion, Mr. Dickinson? Yes. I'll second that. Thank you. And discussion? Wayne? For clarification, there was 37 cents added to that to their request. I'll mark that down, Wayne. <laughs> you can give them 37 cents. I'm taking the motion at $97,515. That's good. And we do have an application in front of us from them that was very recently, but they were one of the ones that originally applied and their original application was turned down uh, regarding the premium pay determination that we made with council's advice. All right, without any further discussion on this one, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries. So we spent all the money? No, not yet. It's just one, two, three, four. I would like to make a motion to award Jessica Taylor funding for the septic replacement project that she applied for months ago. Mm -hmm. Oh. What what's the category for it? Water so, infrastructure. Where, where is she going? Was, was there a response from Queensbury on that? And I know we referred that to them. I didn't know if there was an official response from that. The last oh. I heard, they were not able to help her. Where, where is she located? Okay. In Queensbury. In Queensbury. Is she in the basin. Not helpful, but... Okay. So, did we get a response from Queensbury because that's a Queensbury resident? I don't think that they were able to help her. I got nothing to fit. I... Yeah. So they didn't respond. I, I think we refer it again to Queensbury. I think that's her responsibility. I mean, I hope she get. I don't know why Queensbury would not take that serious. I'm I'm trying to look at the number. I think it was nine thousand. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yes. Nine. Oh. Okay. Should I entertain a vote on that or or no? No. All right. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. Okay. Um, the other one I do want to mention to everyone is that she's. I'm not forgetting anything. Just hold on. Um, North Warren Emergency Squad also asked if we were taking additional applications, I advise them that we were not doing a second round of funding. So far to my knowledge, we have not awarded anyone a second amount of money. The North Queensbury Volunteer Fire Company is separate and the one that we awarded today to Warrensburg EMS is separate from Warrensburg Fire. Did, did we put a cap on the EMS uh, at 75,000? I thought we had when we discussed this, that we said EMSs could apply, but we put a cap on. And now the this Warrensburg EMS is at 97,000. I'm just saying, I thought we told the other ones they were capped at 75. That's, that's to my memory, that's, but maybe I'm wrong. Initially, I think, yeah. I think we left Warrensburg off though. Yeah, I think we, we Warrensburg was in, inadvertently left off that list of all the other EMS. Yeah, all I'm yeah. saying is, should we cap them at the 75 like we asked all the other EMS? That's all I'm saying. We, I think we gave, I'm looking at um, Glens Falls, we gave Macora 172 for ambulance. I think, I think we, I think we went, I think we exceeded that number. Okay, then, um, Chairwoman. Yes, I, I'm sorry. I, you did reference uh, the 150 for the North Queensbury Fire Department, but we didn't do a motion and vote on that. Oops. Um, Let's do. Is that a motion? Time? Yes, please. I just they've been here. Yes. Um, 150,000. We have a second. Mm -hmm. Is there discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. 
that carries. I will note for the record that we have an application they were able to throw out during the time that they were sitting here. Right. So we, we <laughs> work great work too. I copied and so yeah, we'll make sure we get that out to the committee. Um, and then let me just let me just add up. Does, does anyone have it added up? The we awarded one, two, three, four, five. I had us at right about 700 on that, I think. That's 694. Six, I think it's 690, 694. 73 or okay. something like that. Yeah. No, 734 was our beginning balance. What am I missing, John? 100,000 plus 28 plus 80 plus 97, 515 plus 150. Right. You missed the two at the top. No, we didn't. We didn't take a motion on the emergency. Did you get the Salvation Army in there? Mm hmm May have included. You got my fire spreader in there? Mm hmm You're the fire star. <laughs> it's me. Hold on. What do you got? That's four fifty-five. Yeah. 455,873. Yes. Yes. We included the DPW. What did you include? What did you include? No, we I'll talk with John. We both kind of had a different number, but we, we had, had included numbers. the 235 for the DP for the solid weight. Okay. Uh, and that did, that did not pass. Did not. Do we want to entertain a different amount for DPW recycling? Did they say they needed a truck or something? Or was that the figure for the truck? It's my understanding this is an ongoing initiative those guys are working on, just trying to figure out more favorable rates for our uh, recycling that would save municipalities money. I put in a $1.7 million grant to the EPA, which we'll get word on in April. Um, so this ask was for, a, I think, a roll-off truck, which would enable um, Correct. the collection of recycling that would just fit into a larger plan. Um, I would imagine that this entire initiative will have a lot of expenses associated with it. Um, yeah, the 235 was specifically for the truck yeah. to support the 1.7 million recycling facility. Correct. Right. Yeah, Rachel. Claudia, can we please put the 45,000 or the balance of what's left towards um, Ethan's ask regarding addressing homelessness in Warren County? Um, it's, I'm certain that there's funding out there to continue to add on to that. I'm sure our administrator and our commissioner will work hard in looking for additional dollars to help with that issue. But recognizing also the bulk of the services are, are in Glens Falls, um, perhaps that could help with some transportation, some food, um, some other types of items for that overhead that we're all talking about as we see that increased need. Um, but allocating that, I think for the remaining 40 or 45 would go a long ways um, that, to help, even though I still firmly believe that's a counting responsibility. I appreciate that. I think that we should set some aside for the emergency shelter. I just want to be clear that the amount we have left at this point is $278,831. Wayne, uh, I would like to make a motion that we set aside the 250000 for the um emergency shelter or homeless uh issue to be uh worked out with the human services committee and with the social services department as a set aside i mean we could set it aside that leaves us with whatever it is thirty eight thousand mm dollars -hmm. what are we going to do with that because we don't have an application in front of us anymore for two hundred fifty thousand dollars Chairwoman, for two hundred and something thousand dollars, I mean, we we denied some other things on here. We didn't even talk about um, some of the other ones that are to be revisited. I think that's an aggressive ask, um, particularly given the fact that there are some areas on the county we can help repurpose to assist. You don't have an application, and I. I mean, we talked about the, all those applications we got with mental health being one of the top needs as well. Maybe there's a way to partner and have those wraparound services. It's an extremely large amount to do that with. Dennis? Uh, I'm going to suggest that we take what we've done today and let everybody figure out finally how much it is. Yeah. And then give us a report saying we got this much left. Yeah. And then we can list whatever projects 
we're interested in and have one more go at it. One more go at it. I'm yeah. totally in support of that and make sure we understand anybody else who may de- maybe rejected the funds or weren't able to use all of them or what whatnot. Um, I do, sorry. I'll withdraw my motion. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I do think we should go into executive session to discuss a couple of the ones that we were had not as a committee discussed. You don't think we need to? What's the basis? This was regarding your advice about the some of the particular entities and their financial status. I thought we could go into executive session regarding the particular financial status of a particular entity. Yep, one moment. Okay. Um, but before we do that, I guess I would like to see if there's privilege of the floor um, from anyone in the public. Because I we probably won't we won't take any action when we come back out of executive session is my is my thought as co-chair here. Go ahead. I don't need a microphone for this. I just want to say thank you very much. You don't know how much it's appreciated. <laughs> Never did You're welcome. Man. We got it. Thank you. <laughs> when I'm in the water flapping my hands, <laughs> 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 no, that isn't in the water with us. Oh, I think you think you'll be able to get that piece of equipment? Yeah, Is it going to take six to eight a year? Six yeah. to eight months to build it. I mean, they're they're like everything else. That's why we're trying to get this going. So hopefully by next winter we can have a full service vehicle ready to go. Okay. Thank great. you we're so much. On behalf of the committee, we're yeah, happy we, you were here. So this will be great too. Why <laughs> the announce? By the way, thank you very much. Well, remember that we still have to get this passed. All these resolutions need to be approved by the full yeah. board of supervisors. I, understand. I do understand, but I really, really appreciate help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Um, let me just check the agenda and check with Gina. Is there anything else? Oh. There was a. Um, yeah, can I can I speak to an agenda item, please? I don't. Um. Bloody bloody blah. Oh. What's this resolution about the bikeway? Yeah. That's what I wanted to, that's what I'll say, and I'd like to speak to that if I may. Go ahead. Okay, resolution 324 of 2022 uh, allocated $100,000 towards bikeway uh, improvements and part of the study, and, and it's a combined uh, project here with uh, Northern Borders uh, program that we've got, that Ethan's got going. For some reason, when that resolution went through, it only allocated 20000 of the 100000 and it put it in the department's budget rather than kind of setting it aside. So at the end of the year, that money kind of went into unappropriated surplus. Um, <laughs> it, it, I'm just trying to recover that that 100,000 is still there um, and that, um, you know, somehow we correct resolution 324, which put it into the 8020 budget, only 20,000 of it. Uh, I don't know, finance was this morning that probably should have gone there, but, uh, um, you know, we just ran across this the other day as we were uh, compiling the list and the agenda for today and looking at what was actually spent. The 20000 has not been spent, but somehow it got put into our budget, um, and I, I I don't know why. But we just I just want an affirmation that that 100000 is still there. Um, I don't think the committee has any problem with that. If you... If- um, the administration has an idea for a solution now, or we can bring it back at the next meeting. Looks like we need at least one more meeting so we can we figure it out. One more meeting. Okay. We'll figure that out. Yes, right. Isn't that really sort of an internal administrative thing? Oh, trust me. Mike Swan will not let us <laughs> without a resolution. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure it. We'll figure it out. Thank you. Anything else? And okay, Mr. Elman, are we okay to go into executive session? Yeah, if, if I could uh, ask that your motion be framed that the purpose of the executive se- uh, session under public officers law section 105.1F is to discuss the financial and or credit history of a particular person or corporation. And specifically, it's the ones that are uh, that were posted as projects to be revisited on all brands, all in glass and brunettos. Yes. Can I have a motion to that effect, please? 
No? Okay. Mr. Agnew, thank you. Second. Sorry. And um, do people feel comfortable having the supervisors and our county attorney here, obviously, plus the committee? Okay. And then we'd ask the members of the public to please excuse themselves. Thank you. We'll go into executive session. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries.